pharma has all of a sudden come out of the blue, walk into the room and say, I have $80 billion to put on the table for health care reform. That was there all along, but no one ever um, opened the door and walked in the room and said, we're actually doing this. I just want to let you all know. You have insurance companies, the association has come together and said, we'll no longer take under consideration or, or as a disqualifier family history or pre-existing conditions. That's major. Okay? That could have happened 10 years ago. But because of the special interest and the protection of some of these individuals that are in Congress now that are saying, we have your back, um, they didn't have to worry about that. We have a number of folks now that are uninsured for two reasons. One, they can't afford it. Okay? Um, I would say underinsured and uninsured, which is driving up the cost of health care. Or two, the insurance company from the beginning wouldn't, would not give them coverage because of a family history and pre-existing condition. Everyone has ran on health care reform mm -hmm. or some form of it. And to say, well, you know, the executive branch wasn't really in behind what I told you I wanted to do, or the legislative branch really wasn't behind what I told you that I'd like to do. And now we have this quote unquote uh, legislative and executive branch ready to move forward with an electorate that were told back in 2008 that health care reform will be a major issue for this Congress and for this administration and that it will happen. Now it's very, it's, it's very uncommon for you to be able to see someone run and say that we're going to do health care reform and actually do it. I mean, I know that's something that people are not accustomed to. But I can tell you, I look at this moment as being a very, very important moment in the history, well, in, in the forward progress of this country. Health care is crippling big businesses, small businesses, and individual families in this country. And the scare, tac scare tactics of the status quo um, is holding this country back economically, um, and also holding this country back as it relates to being competitive with the rest of the world. Explain to people who don't, aren't in the middle of the debate, you're fighting a good fight, you, you see what's going on. How is it that health insurers are able to make good, defeat good arguments amongst members of the House and the Senate? Like what are they doing? Why are they so effective at doing what they're doing? Well, um, A, um, this is their job. 365 days a year and providing the information uh, not only to the public but also to elected uh, officials throughout the country. They do this every day. This is not, uh, um, this is, well, health care reform is the issue of right now as it relates to the Congress. We're going to move on to other issues. Um, uh, the health care, I mean the insurance industry they have whole divisions that deal with this. Many of those relationships go into talk radio. Uh, many of those relationships go into cable television shows. Many of those relationships, uh, even over the internet, emailing out um, 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 information um, that kind of, you know, uh, say, throw mud in the water, uh, murky the water, as it relates to. Uh, um, this issue of health care reform. And also you have the political arm, you know, that's there. They support campaigns, they um, get involved in independent expenditure ads. So you have, you know, a, a real um, arsenal of, of communication that, and also of political influence uh, that insurance companies have um, in keeping the status quo in 